when you're minimalist, but your kids are not. Your kids need toys and books, but they don't need all the toys and all the books. The average child has about 200 to 300 toys and only plays with 12. You know, use that as a gauge. If they're typically playing with only 12 toys, maybe you, you set out 15 toys for each child, then that's 30 in total. Now that's a fraction of what they typically have access to. Hey friends, it's Nish here from Our Simple Story and welcome to today's video. I counted all the kids' toys and they had about 300 toys. Not everybody's gonna count each individual block or, or Lego piece, but what I find is I find these pieces everywhere. And so it does take time you know, to find them all around the house and then put them away. By counting each piece, I sort of know you know, each one can take a second to put away. And so it's not just putting Jenga away or putting all the blocks away. I have to go around the house or, you know, go to that section where they are playing and pick each individual piece and put it in their basket or a box or whatever. And so it does take some time. By saying that the Lego is only one toy, I think it sort of defeats the purpose of you know, the time and energy that you as a mom or dad will have to put away these toys. Choose to count these toys as individual pieces, but you don't have to. Um, I also choose to count the toys just for fun because I was curious how many of my kids had. You don't have to count your kids' toys. If you want to, go ahead, but don't feel like you need to count the kids' toys. Um, I was just curious and so I did. It doesn't have to be a specific number that you're trying to reach, but just more of the feeling. If you are starting to feel stressed about having too many things to clean, too many things to have to put away, or it's too difficult for your kids to not put away toys, then I think it might be a little too much. Maybe you don't want to take all their toys, but maybe you can do is keep half. If you have the space, um, definitely keep half the toys in a box, in a closet somewhere where they don't get to see it. And hopefully, um, you know, maybe in a couple months or a couple weeks, you can bring them out and then the they might enjoy it even more. See what's best for your family, but I would definitely recommend it. Now, when I made this video before, um, we had a smaller space, we were in 400 square feet, so I couldn't you know, do the ro toy rotation thing. Um, and then we moved to a slightly bigger space, so I was able to do a little bit of a toy and book rotation. And now that we've moved into a bigger space, hopefully I can do more of that. Um, but I would definitely recommend trying it out. There's no harm in trying to put away their toys and seeing how they play with the toys that they do have. And then in a couple months, you know, rotate the toys and then hopefully they'll think it's a new toy or they'll want to play with it more. So figuring out your own values, your own family values, you know, what you guys want in your life and then sort of making sure that your house reflects that also applies to kids' toys and books. Using your own values to decide what to bring to their house. Now for myself, I want to bring toys that are not harmful to the kids, so not toxic, but also not harmful to the planet. And so those are that's where I'm gonna be putting my money towards. Um, and you know, you are the parent, you are the filter for every toy that comes into your house. You have to make sure that you actually filter the toys. And so, you know, if there are toys that are gendered, if they're violent, if they're toxic, if they're harmful to the kids in terms of you know mental stability or um and then if the toys are also harming the planet which your kids live in then i think you can say no to them and it's sort of hard sometimes you know you will get gifts from family members and friends who mean well and i think you know it's also education not everybody has access to all these things that you know you may know about uh, also, you know, some people might not really care. They might not have the same values as you. But I think if you if you talk about your values and you, you know, make it known, then I think if somebody really wants to give your family a gift, then hopefully, you know, they will be able to sort of align with your values, at least for the gift giving portion. Um, now, I know that's a little bit hard. Sometimes, you know, we have family members who are stubborn. But I think over time, if you continue to say, you know, um, I would like gifts that are more meaningful, whether it's you spending time with the kids, you giving them an activity, or, you know, if you are gonna give toys, then give me toys that are not toxic for the kids or toxic for the planet. You know, I think people will understand that if you have those filters, um, they, might, they might say no, 
in the beginning, but I think eventually they'll understand, you know, it is better for the child. And so at the end of the day, if they love your kids, grandparents, family members, friends, they will want to give the kids gifts that the kids will love, but that are also, you know, not bad for the kids and not bad for the planet. I will leave a link in the description down below to a couple of resources that are really great. Um, there's a couple of blog posts, some videos talking about, you know, maybe these are videos you can share with your family and friends when it comes to birthdays, Christmas, other holidays that gifts are typically ex exchanged. Um, so be sure to check out the description down below for those links. So I would definitely recommend one, to take it easy on yourself, but two, be a filter for everything that comes to your house. Again, if you are curious to see what toys and books I have for my kids, I made a video not too long ago, so I will be sure to link it up here and down below. And I wanted to thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next video.